So introduce yourself and then I'll introduce me since I reached out to you about this. Okay. Um, my name is Andrew Norris. Uh, I'm an artist and a podcaster. I live in Colorado, just outside of Boulder. Been here for about 10 years. Um, started RTAF, which is my podcast, with uh, my buddy John Speaker. He left about 45 episodes in, and now I'm just running solo on that. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I make, I guess, uh, the art side of it, I make paintings. And I, I guess I would just describe them as uh, psychedelic. It's cool to, like, talk about psychedelics on your show. Yeah, so uh, I have, I mark it explicit, regardless of whether we talk about. Oh, uh, for sure, yeah. It may be explicit or not, because I don't, this isn't, I don't really intend this conversation to be heard by children, so whatever. Like, I don't want my guests to feel like they can't come and speak freely about whatever it is they might want to talk about, you know? So I, I just tell them yeah. to edit it and it's explicit. So say whatever the hell cuss, I don't care, you know, just freely cool. conversate. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so yeah, it makes conversation better that way. I'm, I'm also having trouble hearing you again. I'm I, really sorry. I was turned away from my mic. That's my fault. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, been making art for about 10 years, doing this podcast for about two and, um, yeah, I just, you know, I'm, I, I just kind of jumped at the chance to be on sort of the other side of, uh, of being interviewed, you know, or being, uh, or like kind of, you know, running the show. I want to kind of like sit back <laughs> and, uh, and just you know, field questions, but, and of course, like contribute to the conversation, but yeah, I want to, I, it, it's good to kind of, you know, know what it's like on the other side. Yeah. It, it definitely think. lends itself to a greater understanding of the experience as a whole. I have never really had a problem talking to people as, as just a generally social person. You know, I have yeah. introverted qualities as well, but you know, like I'm a generally social person. So I just find it natural to, talk to people about things that they're passionate about somehow and me being a creative as well i like talking to other creative people to see what crazy or not crazy stuff they got going on because you never know yeah. what's going to come on the other side of that question you just don't yeah know. on the other side of what sorry the other side of I the keep... question um oh yeah yeah uh you know what do you do what's your type of creativity that kind of thing you know that that's uh -huh. Yeah. You never know yeah, what the answer is going to be. Yeah. Well, yeah, I appreciate you uh, inviting me on here because, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm on my, I'm on my hundred, hundred and one episodes now. And which is great. I feel, yeah, I feel like just like chopping it up all the time is, is it gets easier and easier for me. Um, it, it's uh, if I had a period where I didn't know if I wanted to keep doing it because I try and do one every week. That, and that's I'm, an investment. I didn't realize how much it was. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, doing it twice a month. Every week must yeah. be uh, a, a, a gauntlet. Well, Zoom really helps. Mm. Zoom is super, super helpful because, you know, you don't have to try that hard either either side doesn't have to like move uh physically really through the world or set up and break down and um i do think that a little bit is lost in terms of like when you're next to someone physically there's something there's like a third thing that, that that's created and that's not as palpable when you're doing a zoom but everything else about it is great, I think, because it, for me at least, it just, I can, I've, I've recorded four episodes in a week before, and that way I'm banked out for a month yeah. at that point. Are you still, are you doing uh, interviews like that? Are you banking episodes? Are you trying to get ahead of it? Um, I are you just kind of rolling with it? I, I roll with it, but I have banked it. Like the beginning of the year last year when I first started releasing stuff, I had, 
you know, two or three in the can, so to speak, at any given time until like August. And then I've just been sort of rolling with it. October got weird, broke schedule a little bit then. But uh, since then, it's been, you know, on track regularly. And I'm I'm going to try and do the same pace again next year, but we'll find out. Um, yeah. I, I have had a couple of Zoom interviews, though, and it, it's been cool. But, you know, I talk to a lot of Knoxvillean folks, not not a lot of people traveling or, or spread around. So I've, I, I normally yeah, that's have right. face-to-face conversations. And it's been yeah, nice. Yeah. It's been really nice. But uh, no, I don't, yeah. I don't normally bank episodes, at least not right now. But if I can get two or three ahead in some convenient way, I'll definitely do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, what's your, uh, what's your day job? My day job, I'm a vinyl installation technician at a, uh, a company called AZ Rags Installation Print Services. I make race cars look faster and uh, if you need like a commercial van stickered up or lettered up or a whole new color change wrap or all those kind of things, oh, I make sick. that stuff happen. Yeah, it's that it's, actually uh, sounds cool as fuck. It is. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> like there. There are days where I walk in and there's a very expensive car just like sitting there waiting for me to put my hands on it. They're pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Like I've I've worked on some nice things and I've worked on things that aren't nice and everything in between and I, and flat signage too, you know. Um, so it's it's just I, ne- I never really know what's going to happen that day, and I like being on my toes when I walk into work. You know, I, yeah. I know what's going to happen, but you know, every day is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have a day job? Yeah. Um. Well, it's funny that you asked that because I would say maybe two weeks ago, I uh, you know, I, I broke my two year fast from. Uh, not having a, a job. Well, I, I guess you still can't really call this a job, but I, I door dashed for a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, the past couple of weeks. It's like, you know, gig work, right? Yeah. Um, and I figured I'd follow my own advice, right? Because on the show, a lot of times on RCAF, I will, I advise people to not, um, quit their day job too soon. Yeah. Cause I did that. I did that once. And it, like when it I first burned. started painting, got burned. Um, it was worth it. I'll say that. Cause it, it's, you know, uh, there's two sides to every blade. Right. Uh, right. And, uh, it was great. But then I don't know, probably six months later, I was scrambling to find like, Luckily, living in, uh, uh, you know, the People's, People's Republic, Republic of Colorado, I was able, able to find some, some uh, trim work. Uh, but, yeah, it was it was tough. It was tough. That was about, back in about uh, 2013 or 14, and um, I learned a lesson there. And so I, I was a little low on money, and so I, I did some door dashing. And, I mean, gig work like that is just so easy. And if you hit it at the right time, you know, I was, I was making between 25 and 30 an hour. Yeah. There's and definitely then, a way to make it super profitable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, then when it started slowing down, I was like, ah, I'm going to stop, you know, after, you know, you finish one order and you're like, just hit a button and you clock out whenever yeah. you want. So, you know, I'm really grateful for the way that like, I don't know, things have, sort of sussed out as a, as our culture moves into like this, um, new technological frontier, you know? Yeah. It's going to be interesting for sure. And I, and and I hate to use that word, but I do it and I catch myself all the time because it's, it's a cheap word in my opinion. There are much better adjectives. Um, (laughs) it's, it's going to be a very trying thing for some folks and a lot of folks won't have a problem with it and it'll be easy peasy for a lot of people. But yeah, it's definitely I mean, going to be an inter- a, f- a fun thing to watch. Yeah, yeah. Are you following any of the like Web three stuff? Um, you know about that? Barely anything. Um, yeah, same. same. <laughs> uh, well, but the next version of the internet should be pretty sweet because the internet's already pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to fuss about an upgraded internet, whatever that may be. As long as it's not, yeah. you know, Skynet, I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah yeah i think um 
as far as my limited understanding of it goes, it's like, you know, now with Web2, we sort of had the, um, you know, I guess the internet sort of got uh, gentrified by uh, giant information and social media platforms. Yeah. Is this, Google, Amazon, Facebook. Are you, you know. Is this the title of Tim Berners-Lee new venture, Web3? Who? Tim Berners-Lee. I don't know him. Oh, he's the guy that came up with the internet. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was Al Gore, dude. Oh, I mean, you know, yes. <laughs> yes, it was. But... <laughs> The guy yeah. that wrote the original, he just sold the original code for the internet as an NFT a couple months ago. Sorry, I was taking yeah. a drink of coffee. It's all good. For everybody uh, <laughs> listening there. But yeah, I think that that's, I mean, you know, a lot of the NFT stuff, um, it's just like any, uh, any bubble, any sort of mm. uh, market bubble. There's people, there's shysters in there sort of, sort of just trying to, make money but i think overall it's a really awesome thing and that like like an nft the way i've heard it put is like an nft can be pretty much anything it's not just for art yeah like eventually people will have like their the titles for their house and for their car on chain yeah uh like as non-fungible tokens so it's like anything that can be like a, a one of one for it, for anybody listening who's just like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? Uh, yeah, NFT <laughs> I guess we should while. maybe, yeah, we <laughs> should it, define some terms. Um, but like, it's certainly, I feel like most people have heard of NFTs by now. But uh, yeah, it it just to sort of broaden the conceptual definition of it for people is that like. The way I, the analogy I heard was that, um, it will be like websites were in the nineties, like when websites first, you know, came out, people yeah. were like, Oh, it's like a brochure, like the recipe book <laughs> and like a blog or like a blog, you know? And then it, you know, a website can be anything. It can be, a, you know, a shopping mall. It can be a public square you know yeah video games youtube all, all those all those different uh creative ways that people found out how to use websites they're going to do with the uh, nfts as well i think i just think that if people are out there throwing that much money around in these markets i could get some of it like i'm yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah i might as well throw my you might as well ring. Like I, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. And if somebody pays me, exactly, then, then great. Yeah, I actually still haven't uh, minted any uh, visual artwork. I as haven't an NFT. I haven't minted a single NFT yet, but I am really thinking about it, and I'll probably do it for a thing about the podcast because that would be neat yeah. to me. That's what I did. Um, my friend, my buddy Allie, made this uh, background. She she like remixed the logo. And uh, are you recording video? Sorry, uh, I guess no, I'm not. No, okay, okay. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> for for everyone listening, uh, you can you can find the logo. Uh, it's all over the place. But while we were, you know, this is when NFTs were super hot back in like February and March and we were hanging out in the, in some of these clubhouse rooms. Did you ever hear a clubhouse? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I wanted to have her back on the podcast anyway. And um, I was like, what if the podcast was an NFT, you know? And so first time I think I recorded um, video over zoom, I like edited it really nicely so that the audio and video would line up. And, uh, while we were talking, she, she had her screen share up and she was basically live remixing the logo in Photoshop. Uh, so well, that's awesome. That's a, yeah, that's a one <laughs> of one. I can't like, I have totally, uh, I know it's on open C, but, um, I don't think anyone bought it yet, but I think it's, um, 
at the time we were charging 0.2 or 0.3 Ethereum, I believe. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I don't mean to just plug this <laughs> no, nine ahead, month old it. NFT. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can find it on OpenSea probably if you just search for RCAF. Um, but yeah, it, it, again, that's kind of like coming back to the point that like NFTs can be anything. Yeah. You know? And um, it's really exciting actually because you take out the middleman in a lot of cases. And instead of, uh, you know, people call it a trustless way of doing business, which, which means that like you don't, sorry. Uh, you don't have to, um, you, basically, you don't have to have a third party or middleman uh, right. verifying things. No mediator, because, like that, that all happens in line in the transaction. Yeah, yeah 100%. that's great. But yeah, um, yeah, NFTs, man, they're fucking cool. But I, uh, it, it's also kind of one of those things where I'm a little hesitant to jump right in because because of the hype and all the the uh brouhaha around it there's so much and yeah i can't trust the hype you know i just that's that's been a thing in my life i just cannot trust it like if it's a tv series that everybody's talking about at work i'm not gonna watch it like (laughs) really (laughs) yeah i'm that i'm that guy like i'll wait till everybody (laughs) shuts up about it so i can have my own opinion in peace yeah yeah (laughs) i did that with uh well, I guess I did that with Game of Thrones until um, about the fifth or sixth season, and then I started watching, and I like binged it all because I I did think it was awesome. Yeah, I that mean point. that that's fair. I uh, yeah. I've definitely done similar things. Um, do you have any like fun story about how you came up with the name of uh, your podcast, or is there any like shenanigans surrounding that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's it it it's a story that has uh, at least two parts. <laughs> so the first the first part was like um, it was around like the around this time in in 2018, and uh, I was just trying to drum up, you know, just thinking of creative, silly ways to make people smile on social media and and just be silly and uh so i i took these like photos of me in my uh in my studio slash living room at the house i was living in at the time and i like put on my friends like art hoodie uh it's very floral uh shouts uh, elizabeth banker um one of my favorite hoodies and then i put on like a a, a, a weed hat like just a weed company hat yeah and i I sat on the couch and like, just like tried to just do the cheesiest kind of, but like serious <laughs> pose I could. And I looked at my camera and, uh, in the photo, I, I used like a, a, a cursive font <laughs> and intention, intentionally misspelled artsy AF and to say arsty AF. And, uh, I think the caption was something like, I can't remember exactly what it was, but, uh, but it stuck. I was trying to be funny and most people got it, but some people were like, you, mi- you know, you misspelled it. Like, yeah. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, so, but then from that, I got the idea and I told uh, my girlfriend, Sarah, I was like, Oh, it would really actually be pretty cool to start a podcast called Artsy AF. Like that just, that in terms of like branding, I don't think I've ever had a better idea uh, or a better, you know, catchphrase, logo, whatever. So I, I will, and, I will say this. Uh, yeah. When Chance Losher told me about your podcast, yeah. I, I was like elated that I found somebody doing a similar thing. And I was instantly upset that this name was taken. <laughs> that, that's how good of a name it is so i was just like ah good. oh all right. <laughs> but yes yeah great. i, I love, love chance it. did you have chance on I did. Uh, your show i did yeah okay sweet nice that's the dude i go way like we met like right when i first started painting professor rainbow yeah yeah he's, Check him he's out. a good dude 
Um, yeah, it, um, you know, he, he, we had that conversation and then the world got smaller and I love when that happens. And that's the yeah. exact reason you and I are talking right now, which I think is just great. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, shouts to chance. Um, yeah. Check him out. Uh, professor, I think it's professor rainbow. Yeah. It is. Um, but, um, um, what were we talking? Oh yeah. Back to the, the story. So, uh, a couple months later, you know, Sarah was like, how's that podcast coming? <laughs> Cause I'm an ideas man, you know, one of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. And, uh, and so I was like, ah, you know, and we went to hang out with our friends, John and Blair, John speaker and Blair speaker. And, um, we were sort of hanging out before this, uh, OPO show that we went to. And about a month before that, I had given John just a bunch of mushrooms, uh, not sold him any, just given him some gifts. gifts and, are very uh, important. yeah, yeah. I don't, I actually don't, I, I sort of, don't like to sell those sort of things anyways. Yeah. I, I feel I, like that I they feel, should yeah. be, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like hippie ethos to sort of give them away. Yeah. They should, they um, should come and go as they please. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I was, we were standing around and I was like, John was like, I've been thinking about starting a podcast. I think I should start a podcast. And I was like, I've been saying the same thing. And like, you know, <laughs> I had Sarah confirm it, luckily, so I didn't just look like a crazy person. Right. And and then he was like, then he said that he actually uh, got the idea while he was tripping on those mushrooms that I gave. Hey, full circle. Yeah. And so we we did it, and um, yeah, we we banked about ten episodes before we launched. And we launched to, uh, I mean, like, really good response. Just had some homies on. Like, I've been living out here uh, for almost 10 years now. So I felt like the idea in my head was sort of to highlight the Colorado music and art scene out here. Which is pretty just keeps, awesome. Yeah, and it just keeps growing, too. And... I've had, uh, you know, I've had all these connections over the past decade or so that that are, you know, mostly friends. And if not, like, I feel like I could sort of just wrangle people into a conversation. Yeah, um, I've done a little bit of both of those. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, some people you have no idea who or what. And you just want to be like, oh, we got to talk, you know. And then other people are like, hey, yeah. man, just come on over. We'll sit. And we'll, you know, it'll be cool. And they, it happens yeah, yeah. both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Like the homies, those are always real fun because, um, you can just sort of let it let loose and just know that it's going to keep flowing. Yeah. So my first, my first episode was with two really good friends of mine, people I've known for well over a decade now and really creative people, both musicians, one of them paints and whatnot as well. And, uh, that was my first episode I recorded in December and then I got back with them plus another friend of mine in that same arena and recorded another to kind of bring it around and uh yeah it you know uh there's a lot of bullshittery in that in that second one and it was awesome. oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 we had a good time. I mean the, it's uh I, I I think people actually like listening to that too like I was for a long time, I was sort of self-conscious about just, I don't know. Um, I mean, I would bullshit. Like, the dynamic between me and John was sort of like, I would go, I would take the conversation into these tangential spaces and sort of like crack jokes. And then John would bring us back on track and sort of like, you know, it was a cool dynamic. And then when he left, uh, I sort of had to stick to the script in a way yeah you had to you had to drive the the conversation a little bit yeah yeah <laughs> i actually had to work you know had to... <laughs> yeah, yeah it needed effort not just sarcasm <laughs> not just jokes yeah uh, uh but yeah i think it's taught me a lot man um 
it's really helped sort of define what I think it means to be an artist uh, more clearly. Yeah, I, I, I jive with that for sure. And it's also opened my eyes as an artist to see how other people practice their creativity because you never know. Like, you know, the, yeah. the, the lady I had on most recent that should be posted this weekend. I'll have to check the schedule, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, Kara Lockmiller, she is a synesthete. So she listens to music and what she sees when she listens to music is what she paints. Like, oh, cool. you know, I would have never guessed that if I hadn't have, you know, talked to her or read her biography or whatever she had on her website, you know, and it, you know, she's got a very unique style and I never would have guessed that's how she done it. And it's great. It's, it's a lot of color and a lot of shape and she paints like singers and actors and musicians and stuff like that, you know, entertainers and her that's own right. unique style. And it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot, like a lot of like live painters in the scene, may, they might not be, um, how do you say it? Synesthetes? Yeah. Synesthetes. <laughs> um, naturally. But just being around so much music and uh, so many consciousness expanding substances, uh, you sort of can fall into that. Yeah, it happens. A little easier. <laughs> it yeah. happens. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's, uh, set and setting are always important regardless of uh, what state of mind you're in. So I've, oh, 100%. I've yeah. really enjoyed live painting and I, I try to do as much of that as I possibly can these days. Mm -hmm. uh, these days is the specific like, you know, context of that because who knows what's happening these days. <laughs> I, usually, yeah. I usually ask the person on the other side of the microphone like what uh, being a creative person in Knoxville is like, you know, at the uh -huh. time because I want to know how it's treating them because it's different for everybody, and I like yeah, yeah. I like to think that people want to hear that question as well. So, well, I can. I can sort of speak to that. I mean, so I grew up in Lexington, Kentucky. I don't know if you knew that or not. No, but, I did not. Um, um, before I moved out to Colorado, probably, and, you know, I, I actually have like a small group of, of old friends that lived in Knoxville. Um, and we would go down there for like Lotus shows and, so I think it, if I can sort of divine your question and, and it's subtler meaning is like, what's it like to be a creative person in the conservative South? Uh, that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it can be I mean, funky. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's, that's sort of why I moved. Um, I was sort of in this in-between state between like I had played in a band with my good buddy and the band broke up and then I just started drawing using like pen and ink and stuff. And at the time, like Lexington was, um, I, I think it's definitely gotten way cooler since I moved away. Unfortunately. <laughs> Damn that. I like, hate when that happens. There's, I mean, I, I love it for, for all my creative friends and, and homies that still live there. But like, uh, they put up a bunch of murals. They have a mural fest actually Ooh. that uh, I'm going to apply to next year. Um, so I think it's gotten a little more like up my alley, like funky artist kind of person. But I mean, you know how it is in college towns, like, uh, you know, Tennessee football is huge. Rules Kentucky, all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kentucky <laughs> basketball yep. rules all. Um, you know, you just sort of are in your little corner like, well, hey, guys, I'm uh, making this uh, trippy art. And everyone's like, cool, you know. And yeah, the dismissive, turn, hey, that's yeah, nice. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's on the nicer side of mm -hmm. things. Uh, so, you know, that's sort of why I moved away. I had a great, I had a great experience living and growing up in Kentucky, but... Um, it just felt like the I think you know the right move at the right time to come to Colorado, and um, we did it. And you know, ten almost ten years later, in, in September next year, it'll be ten years. Um, 
seems like the right move. I don't know. <laughs> like I've watched, I've watched Denver and Colorado just like explode with creativity and money and awesome new people over the last decade. And, you know, I, I recommend to most anybody, especially if you have sort of like an adventurous spirit or personality to, to move away from your hometown for at least a little bit and just see what it's like, uh, in other places. Yeah, for um, sure. That's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that like, you can get that with travel too. Like, you know, you can, you can, uh, just travel to a different country. Um, I think that that rounds out, uh, an individual to a good degree. Nah, I'm, and I'm inclined it, to agree. Yeah. I think it pops you out of what you expect and what you're used to. Cause you see how you just see how provisional and arbitrary, somewhat arbitrary each cultural style is. You yeah. know, which yeah. I think is a cool thing to look at. I, I've, I, I flew, I flew to Denver my 28th mm -hmm. birthday. So I spent the week of my 28th birthday out there with my partner at the time and uh, a really good friend of mine who also had a birthday that week. And, uh, you know, I have red hair for all the listeners out there and I have a lot of it. Oh yeah. And that was the first time I'd ever seen like rocks, that same color as my hair. <laughs> because I've lived in East Tennessee my whole life. Now I've traveled all up and down the East Coast, and um, I've been to Vegas. And, you know, I've I've been around a little bit. Um, it was really a surprise to see the rocks. The, I, like I literally just grabbed my hair and like laid it against a rock, and I was just like, "Holy shit, this is crazy!" And uh, and that that was something that really struck me. And then standing on and a Eleven and a half thousand foot elevation, like a sightseeing deck, looking east, just flat and like streetlights to the horizon, was pretty Hell neat yeah. because I'd never seen that before. So, you know, this earth I live on now has a a greater sense of scale that I've seen that sight. So it's it you know, hundred percent. I just stood there and looked at it for like ten minutes, like holy cow, that, that's big. <laughs> but you know, yeah. it was never a sight that I'd seen before in the way that I just saw things flat to the horizon you know from from that uh -huh. high up because the mountains aren't like eleven thousand feet tall here they're just not yeah 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 it's uh you know all the different uh perspectives and vantage points you can get yourself into i think as long as they're not too dangerous it is a good thing you know yeah you could it probably just... glean some insight from it mm-hmm yeah, hundred percent. So, but yeah, man. Um, so, have you thought about? Am I the first person you've interviewed like outside of Knoxville? No, I, I've I had one fella from Nashville, and I'll be interviewing another person from Nashville um, in January, and um, you know, it's it's a regional quote unquote thing. I, uh, yeah. I, you know, Knoxville is obviously the focus, but if I know cool people that are from Asheville or Louisville or Atlanta or whatever, you know, just any regional other city, I'll, I'll have them on or talk to them. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not ashamed to put another one of my creative acquaintances in front of a microphone, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, even the title of my podcast is like, it's ostensibly about art, but then we, uh, you know, I get into all sorts of shit with people. My favorite thing is, or not my favorite, but like <laughs> one of my pet pet topics is like just asking people about free will and having a conversation about that. Um, and, and, you know, it's so like titles, I guess titles of a podcast or, or anything can, you know, I guess it's, the old phrase of just don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, for sure. And, yeah. Uh, I named, yeah. I named mine the KAAMP one because I like golden era radio and that, yeah. that <laughs> just, hi everybody. Welcome to the KAAMP. Like that always, like that's the thing that plays in my head when I think about the yeah. idea of my podcast. 
Yeah. So I wanted some letter call out, you know, uh, anonym and, um, I, I just, that, that was always it, you know, it was just always, yeah. and it stands for Knox area artist networking platform because I wanted people yeah. to be able to discover new artists or find new artists in some way, or, you know, like I started this in the middle of the Knox County pandemic lockdown BS and, uh -huh. and, um, you know, like people aren't out at first Friday. They're not out at shows. They're not doing this. They're not doing that, but they're sitting at home listening to stuff. So I might as well talk yeah. to people and share the conversations because one, that's fun for me. I get to meet people in a very controlled scenario which mm -hmm. is important uh, and relevant yeah. right now. And then, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, uh, the people that care to listen can listen and enjoy it, hopefully, just as much as I did. So, yeah. you know, just, just having another outlet for creative people to, you know, be in was my big thing. But the golden mm -hmm. area, golden era radio inspiration is, is the thing that constantly ticks in the back of my head when I, when I think about the podcast. It's just too yeah. much fun of a theme not to play on for me. And every now and again, yeah. I'll get my like Midwestern accent, blah, 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 and like try to play it up. But, oh, know, bro, I'm like that's a Southern, that's a Southern accent. Don't let anybody say that's a, that's an Appalachia. No, not mine. I'm southern. talking like <laughs> oh. when, when I do the, the radio. Oh, stuff. when you're like, uh, K W A and the, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like the call sign and shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, I'm really, when you, I'm really you, going you. on about it, but yes, <laughs> definitely. I have By a the way, southern accent. I, I love your accent. Like <laughs> as soon as I, I like scroll through your Instagram real quick and I was like, Oh, not Knoxville. I was like, well, I, I don't live there, but you know, and then I listened to your voice and I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. <laughs> Cause like, I, I, I'm just real comfortable with it. Like, the, um, you know, I said I grew up in Kentucky, right. but like all my, my parents and, um, uh, their family is from, uh, Ashland. I don't know if you know, yeah, I is, do. but it's like, yeah, it's Eastern Kentucky right across the border from Virginia. And like, uh, uh, I'm just, you know, you sound like, uh, you could be my cousin or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were to see Chance and I in public, you'd swear that we were related. So it's just, yeah, it, yeah. it cracks me up. But yeah, yeah, I mean, this the way I sound has actually been a benefit to me in my travels because for some reason, yeah. bartenders just love to hear me talk. Anytime I go any more than like 300 miles away from Knoxville. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, the fun thing about it too is... Um, like a lot of coastal people, I think have this, like, I'll, yeah, I think it's just a prejudice that whenever they hear someone with an accent like that, they're like, they just think like, you know, dumb, uneducated. Yeah. That happens. And then they, and then they think like, that's a Republican accent or, you know, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so then like, if, if they actually take time to listen you defy their expectations, which I think is like always such a, a good thing to, to practice and be aware of, of your own expectations when dealing with anything, uh, especially people. Oh so, man. You know, like, e expectations are a thing that everybody constantly battles and so many people never figure out, but it's, yeah. it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a tough thing to, you know, pretend like you've got it figured out <laughs> even even a little bit it's hard man like especially yeah. when you're a person that crafts things or makes things or produces things that are relative and or subjective in nature in you know in their nature so it's it's difficult yeah <laughs> you know when the 100%, things, when i mean the things you make don't match what you saw in your head sometimes it's very difficult <laughs> yeah i mean it for me it like never truly does you know right and i uh, to, to just jump into sort of the process of making art or even making a podcast. Like, uh, I sort of let, I sort of like let it unfold in front of me typically. Like I don't try and impose, um, I mean, sometimes with questions and guests, you have to, uh, you have to have your, your questions, uh, your, your prompts or whatever, but you never know what the person's going to say. Oh yeah. Right? That's great. <laughs> and then with the painting too, like I try not to impose a, some sort of grand final image. I sort of just like, 
keep it random until something pops out at me from the energy and, and visual uh, data that I put on the canvas up to that point. Right. And, and I think that that's a, you know, I, again, I definitely don't know shit because no one does, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, which is a good thing to keep in mind. You know, you sort of check yourself with that, with that truth every now and then. But I would say that that's a pretty good way to live life. Um, sort of just watching things unfold and realizing that like most things you didn't have much to do with them happening, even your own personality to a certain extent, you know, it's sort of just it happens. Yeah. The, the, and you, we are, you, there's a circle of things you can uh, manipulate around you. Like in my head to me, this thing is called the sphere of influence. Like those are the things mm -hmm. that I actually like can manipulate or influence or, you know, something I can have something to do with. And then right. outside of that, like I have to not care about it at all because I don't 100%. have any control over it. And it's, it's, it's black and white ish in that way. But you know, if I realize like I have nothing to do with that thing or how it, how it happens or what it does, then my hands are off. Like literally emotionally, I can't worry about it. It's not my deal. Yeah, and I mean, you'll notice that like much of the news cycle is dedicated to convincing people that, um, and I mean, and not to, you know, there's obviously this can be pushed back against, but it's dedicated to sort of making people care about things that they really don't have control over, you know? Oh, it's the, like the 24 hour news cycle is, is the bitch here because if we just yeah. had like two hours in the day to get our news, we would get the news. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my whole gripe with that shenanigan right now is that we don't need news yeah. 24 hours a day. That's, you know, there's all kinds of filler information that isn't relevant. Well, no, it's like it's pretty much personalities now. It's not really news. It's like dudes and, and ladies and everybody on there just sort of giving you their opinion. And, you know, depending on whatever channel you happen to, to be tuned to. I mean, that's, I, I don't really watch the news, but like, you know, it's good, you know, it's good to be informed about things that you can have a hand in affecting, but like they're, they're aiming straight for your brainstem to get clicks basically. <laughs> yep. And like the, the more that people realize that even in some small capacity with our, you know, little, uh, podcasts, the more that, that, we can actually come together and create this sort of decentralized uh, web of people who see through that, that bullshit. I think, you know, the better off we'll be as a, uh, as a community, whether that's locally, regionally, you know, yeah. worldwide. Yeah. On up the scale. Um, Interdimensionally. For those, for those <laughs> of us. <laughs> it, yeah. It's that, that social awareness, I think a lot of people are missing and it's not, it's not because you can't have it. It's just because they don't care to put the energy into doing it, you know, it's, or they well, it don't. It takes a lot, man. Yeah. Or you they know, just don't like, know it's possible. Yeah. The thing about it is like, to come back to my little pet topic of free will, like you don't know until you know, and the process of understanding things takes i mean it's it's not quite random but it unless you know i think like maybe the first seed of knowledge is understanding that you should seek to be more well informed and again in this in this culture it's hard because there's so much just information out there some of it's closer to the truth than than some other parts of it and it's making, you know, it makes, I don't think, you know, people have said this, this is nothing new, but like our brains like evolutionarily aren't equipped to deal with this much information all of the time. Oh yeah, for sure. You know? We are, we are not that kind of robot. <laughs> right, right, right. It's just not that, it doesn't I mean, work like that. And again, like, like to be clear, like I don't think we're exactly robots, even though I don't believe in free will. Like my problem with the, 
the term free will is like the free part because free implies that, uh, you know, you can absolutely shape your life to any shape that you want it um, just by exercising will alone, you know? And I think we all have decisions. Um, but, I mean, the fact of your birth, when, where, and to whom you were born, like, you have outside of your no, control. No control over that. Um, so it's like, it's also caught up with this definition of self. Like, some new age people want to expand the definition of self to some sort of like pre time before you were born and you chose your parents. And you, you know, like, I hate that spiritual absolutism. It's, <laughs> total trash yeah. and like doesn't do anybody any good except for the people who happen to be born into like pretty privileged areas of the world, I guess. Um, and then like, you know, I don't know. I don't, now I'm getting a little, I, I've, I've sort of lost my train of thought, but basically I'm saying that the idea of like a an unchanging self, and free will are sort of uh, two sides of the same coin. And I think both are sort of uh, ill-defined. Like I think of the self more as like a, a process rather than um, like a, a fixed thing. Like I say Andrew or I say uh, is it, it's Zachary or is, that's your last name. Yeah, Zachary's Zachary. last name. Okay. Um. So the reason to now get super tangential, I want to call you Zachary because I had a buddy who lived in Knoxville named Zach Cobb. Shouts to Zach. He also has red hair. Hey, look at him. And, and so, like, when I <laughs> look him up, uh, he he made, I think he used to make jewelry. Um, good guy. Good guy. He lives in Nashville now. Um so when I saw your profile, I just saw the Zachary and the red hair and the Knoxville, and I was like, this guy's name is Zachary. <laughs> and now I can't remember your first name, and it's so embarrassing. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, nobody but, would have known if you didn't say that. You I know. Been, you would have been the only one. I know. <laughs> and I, I was just trying to, I was just trying to uh, make an example of the self, too, to come back to what I was saying. So, like, when I say Andrew... Uh, right. It's just sort of this like linguistic gloss over this process, this story, this uh, history. It's like it's a metabolic process and it's just like every sort of like causal and, uh, you know, uh, historical event that has led up to me saying these words right now yeah. that I have no idea what I'm about to say even which is curious, right? Like, what am I going to say next? Who knows? Maybe I'll just continue down this train of thought and see what happens. Like, we can't control necessarily the thoughts that come into our head. I guess we sort of have some kind of agency into what we focus on and what we extrapolate from those thoughts. Um, but again, like, for me, at least, in, in the experience of being me, like, I didn't know until I knew that I could actually, like, sort of focus on thoughts that made me feel good and sort of, like, realize the ones that were just, like, discursive chatter that tormented me and made me feel anxiety, right? Yeah, I get that. But I did... Had I... had. Had someone never explained that to me, I don't know. I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. It, it's possible. Um, you know what I mean? I, I, so, I choose the analogy of like it, it's literally a stream. You know, I like the imagery of that analogy, the stream of consciousness. So I just imagine, mm -hmm. and you know, the visualness of my brain. It's like, oh, yeah, here's this nice little creek. And the ideas literally just come like text floating down it. And you either like grab one and take it home and like look at it, play with it, deal with it. Or you just like yeah. float on by because there's some bullshit you want no part of. So I, 100%. You know, so th that's the visual sort of metaphor that I I'd use in my head to make that point, you know. Yeah. But it, it, you'll notice that, like, even with that knowledge, sometimes you just can't help but 
picking up the the bullshit that comes down the stream. I think that's the part that and makes the, us human. <laughs> that, yeah, that's the part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we had like completely, you know, complete freedom of will, then why would we pick the bullshit? Know, yeah. We would make, yeah, we would make the best decisions all the time. And I, I think that like, honestly, I can't explain my explanation of it all. Uh, always falls a little bit short and there's ways that um, anybody who really, really wanted to could push back on them. But that's, uh, that's just, thank you for letting me uh, ramble and for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> I guess. All right. Well, we, we can do this. We can end this here yeah. because I've got five minutes left on my card and we're hitting right, the, right. the 55 minute mark we talked about earlier. So, um, right, right. I'm Thomas Zachary, and this is the KAAMP, and uh, this is Andrew Norris with RTAF coming across to y'all over the internet, the radio waves, uh, from two different spots in the country to talk about the artsy shit just for y'all, and why we enjoy it, because that was my selfish reason to talk to Andrew today. Um, Andrew, plug your oh, stuff, yeah. and uh, we'll get out of here. Sweet. Uh, you can find my art at andrew.norris.art on Instagram, Andrew Norris Arts with an S dot com. Uh, that's my shop. If you want to buy some cool art and find RTAF podcast on any podcast platform at RTAF podcast on Instagram, Thomas. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate it. Hey man, I've enjoyed it. Thank you for your time. And, uh, we'll link up and do this again, maybe in the future and talk about other stuff. Cause it's fun. Yeah, dude. All right, man. Super Have a good cool. day. Yeah, you too.